Yeah, well, we were uh, we're very proud and humble of, of that achievement. It's the first time ever a company's been recognized for two years in a while to win Marketer of the Year at the Cannes International Festival of Creativity. Um, I think we set out on a journey, to be honest, back uh, in... Welcome back. Just days before Bot Light addressed the controversy of a partnership with Dylan, VP of Global Marketing, told said he was very proud of the brand creative effectiveness younger consumers who are consuming Bud Light. Therefore, if they want to stay relevant to new generations, as the generations grow up, they understand that they need to start being more progressive for Bud Light specifically, which is why we're going to see Budweiser stay exactly where it is when it comes to pro-Americana messaging. Because whether this billboard is up or not, or it was seeded by them as a funny meme, they're using the exact language of the demographic they're chasing. So yes, I think exactly what is happening with Bud Light. You realize when something is going on, you will see videos you were not supposed to see. I came across this shit on Twitter recently. I don't know if you have seen this. I will show you the video, but before I do, Oli London sent this out on Twitter in the wake of the bot like backlash Dylan has not posted on TikTok or Instagram in 16 days. It appears the boycott of the brand and outreach at Dylan partnership with Boyd Light has had an effect with the TikToker likely trying to lay low, hoping that the backlash will calm down. He also sent this out, Dylan spotted taking out the trash in stage paparazzi photos in Los Angeles. Do you think it's filled with bot light? If you have not subscribed to this channel, please endeavor to do that. And if possible, why not share this clip? Yeah, well, we were, uh, we're very proud and humble of, of that achievement. It's the first time ever a company has been recognized for two years in a while to win Marketer of the Year at the Cannes International Festival of Creativity. Um, I think we set out on a journey, to be honest, back uh, in 2018, where you know we were really focused on driving organic top-line growth globally. Mm. Um, and, and then we're going to do that by winning through our portfolio of brands and, and really being building powerful brands. And we said to ourselves, you know, we have to become much better at, at creative uh, creativity and creative effectiveness. Yeah. So we set a mission and literally in our, our, our marketing leadership conference that year annually to say, listen, we want to go out and be the world's best at creative effectiveness. Uh, and it's amazing to see that we've accomplished that. And, and we're really using creativity to, to solve real consumer problems uh, and business problems for the company to ultimately drive top line growth. That's what we're here for. Um, and then Budweiser, yeah, I was uh, excited. Uh, it, it's been a portfolio play um, across all of our brands, but uh, Budweiser did well. I think we won uh, eight Lions last year yes. uh, across multiple countries. So we had a great program uh, with Bud, uh, Bud uh, WhatsApp Records. Yes, if you take a look at the new VP, you realize he actually praised what they have been doing in the past and the new strategy they put forward amazing but when you take a look at the backlash you realize that this is the greatest mistake these people have made i have never seen a backlash extending to about four weeks now, this is my first time i'm seeing this but every single day it keeps training like never before which is something by now i thought it would be over but it is not stopping anytime soon yesterday i put a video out about this man where a lot of people are so skeptical about this new vp just incredibly important to me my decisions with teams i mean i i try to build teams of people who maybe nobody else has taken a chance on them i try to bet on people who haven't had the opportunity bet on people with similar values as me who are hungry and want to do great things but care about each other and protect each other and are kind and good mm -hmm. um yes immediately it was announced that budweiser marketing vp behind dylan partnership takes leaves of absent replaced by senior executive to somebody immediately send this out no no thought is a white cis bearded me 
he just cannot be the new VP of marketing, only another stunning and brave member of the LGBTQ community can truly know how to market beer to middle-aged blue-collar, mainly heterosexual white men. For um, and then Budweiser, yeah, I was uh, excited. Uh, it, it's been a portfolio play um, across all of our brands, but uh, Budweiser did well. I think we won uh, eight Lions last year yes. uh, across multiple countries. So we had a great program uh, with Bud, uh, Bud uh, WhatsApp Records in Colombia. Uh, we had an Unbreakable Courts program with the NBA in Brazil. Um, we had a global program around the Budweiser Energy Collective that performed well. So, yeah, very, uh, very proud and humble and looking forward to this year's competition. And what strategy really worked for the brand? Because past two years haven't been really easy on most of the companies. So what are the things that you did right, according to you? Yeah, I think, you know, having a very clear positioning. So, you know, we want to inspire people to do big things in life, you know, seize opportunity, go out and, you know, chase greatness. Um, and, and staying true to that proposition and then really bringing that to life through, through our platforms. Yes, I read through an article from Fubi. They said this company made a big mistake by struggling to backtrack after the backlash that they were supposed to proceed, you know, to do what they are doing. Putting the VP on leave Apologizing was not necessary. That if you want to take up advertisement to deal with people like this, you are not supposed to even apologize or look back on what your consumers are saying. I think I will do a full segment where I will read out this article so you can understand exactly what they are insinuating here. Fubé last year actually invited the land, so when I saw that, it was not strange. When you take a look at what is happening here with a new VP, this came the day before they had to address this issue. So he was not even talking about what is happening. He had to praise the effectiveness of the strategy they are putting forward and look at what is going on now with them. No, not so nice. That bar talk has been backed up by sales, at least nationally. According to Brewbound, a beer industry news site, Coors Light sales spiked 11% the week the picture of the can went viral, and Miller Light sales rose 17%. This, while Bud Light sales plummeted by 30%. But it's a political hot potato most bars don't want to touch. We don't want to uh, offend anybody, upset one side or the other. We want to make everybody happy and stay neutral. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but uh, yeah, we're not going to dive into it. It remains to be seen whether the backlash will be temporary, but one thing is certain, many will be closely watching what happens next. In Billings, Phil Vampelt, MTN News.